Hey, where will I be cheap famous? I don't know, probably never. But what I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job correctly, I should be like the start of Wizard of Oz and be completely in black and white. Don't worry, glorious Technicolor is on the way, without the need for munchkins or a yellow brick road, or indeed a tornado and a hockey witch. That shows you where my mind has been going today. Oh, it sits. When you've been up since half past four, it makes it a very long day. Anyway, you will have been able to see from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. Now this is the return of my pick series, and I am so delighted that after a little bit of a break from YouTube dealing with, you know, real life crap that occasionally hits us, the lovely Anya Pink Sweets, one of my bitches of Eastwick, she's back. She chose from a selection of photos that I sent, and we, we are creating stunning looks for you. So, if you want to find out exactly what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, without having to put a house on a witch and nick her shoes, It's a long way to go for a new pair of shoes. Mm. You have the best seat in the house. As I have said, and am backed by Sammy the Sloth Straw, he often repeated on other less imaginative channels. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes, my lovely. Hey, my lovelies. Right, I am back from the intro. Um, I will have explained to you in the intro that this is da, 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 another one of my pick or photo inspiration um, films. And I am super super delighted that my lovely friend Anya Pink Sweets is back. She had a bit of a hiatus, she was dealing with stuff in the real world, <laughs> you know, not on YouTube, um, but she's back and she agreed to do a collab with me which is awesome. Now, I'm gonna put the picture up there of the picture that she has chosen. I have it on my phone just here. So you can see it's um, it's like a farmyard with an open field, loads of pumpkins, scarecrow with a lamp, spooky trees and a sort of bluey greeny night sky. So super Halloweeny. So I went through a load of my individual shadows and swatched a load of greens and oranges and yellows and sort of kind of you know teals bluey greenies for the sky and stuff so that's the kind of color scheme i'm going to be working with uh, i've got a couple of dark ones on here not that many um because i kind of although the picture itself is very dark I don't want to take it well I say I don't want to take it too dark but you know what I'm like I probably will end up taking it super dark and smoking it out and get carried away um, at the moment I'm thinking probably greeny blue smoky eye with maybe orange and yellow or for the pumpkins on my mobile lid. That's what I'm thinking at the moment anyway. 
Um, I'm just taking these swatches off before I end up wiping them all over myself because regular viewers will know what a klutz I am when it comes to stuff like that. Um, a lot of these particular colours I don't actually have marked as to what they are. So, so I'll just go this green, that green. Ooh, I just spotted a green that I'd not swatched. This is one of my new ones. This is Colourpop Wishful Winking. I treated myself to five new Colourpop ones. Bearing in mind this is now swatched over a wet hand. But oh, that's that kind of greeny, reddy, dual chrome, similar to the MAC red green. I don't think I'm going to use that in this one because I haven't really got any red in the picture. Um, if you've never watched one of my photo inspirations before, there's basically two rules. You can only use colours in the photo. You cannot add colours in that are not there, but you don't have to use all of them. So you could look at that and go, I'm just going to do pumpkin, I'm going to do orange and yellow, or I'm just going to do the greens, or I'm just going to do, you know, whatever. Um, Sorry, I've got a, my um, my ruddy um, tripod keeps slipping. I think I'm going to have to eventually get a new one. There we go. Hopefully that will. I've kind of got a hair band thing looping the arm at the front of the tripod to a pallet. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I just snorted. Right, so that's the two rules. You can only use colours in the picture and you can't add colours in, but you haven't got to use all of them. So it gives you a really good free reign on what you can and can't do. I'll be perfectly honest, the reason that I put the you can't add colours in is because I'd got so fed up, not so much with people that I collab with, because the majority of them love colour anyway. But I'd got so fed up watching the bigger beauty gurus who'd get, you know, a colourful palette. Say, like, these these five that I'd randomly grabbed. And they'd go, hmm, I'm just going to grab my bronzer or I'm just going to grab a neutral palette just to put some brown through the crease. Why? Why, why, why can't you put a purple through the crease or a pink through the crease? And it just wound me up so much that I'm just like, right, you can't add colours in if they're not there. And the first few pictures that I picked deliberately had no brown in them. <laughs> Even though, like I said, people that I collab with tend to love colour like myself. Um, this is still a teaching channel. So um, I do go at a speed that beginners can keep up with me. And unless I'm doing a cut crease, which obviously takes a bit of time, I don't speed any of the blending up, etc. Um, and that's the door. Hang on. No matter what time I sit down, I always seem to get interrupted. Right. As I was saying, one of the other things that I do for people who perhaps don't have the greatest of eyesight and are watching me on a phone screen, I zoom right in so that just my eyes are on screen. This means you're not distracted by me wincing in pain and you can see exactly what's going on in terms of how well a pigment is blending or whatever technique I'm, I'm using. Um, this does mean of course that when I look down to change brushes, add more pigment to a brush etc you do get the delight of seeing my hairline but that's a bit of a trade-off really in terms of being able to see what's going on. I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment talking you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids because I see so many people say I've got hooded lids, even big beauty gurus when actually what they've got is deep set eyes, there is a difference. Um, the way that shadows wear on the lids throughout the day are very similar but the actual application method you need to use are very very different. 
So, I will insert the clip, it will be very up close and personal. And I'll be back at the other end to start applying colours and seeing exactly what happens when I start playing. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crime Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap if you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open so two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues hey my lovelies I am back Right here. I think 
I'm going to start with uh, a tapered blending brush. This one's from Boozy Shop. It is clean, it's just stained. This is the problem with white bristles. Um, and I'm going to start off with the Viennese Waltz of Blending, which is basically natural turns towards your nose, a fleckle when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. Now, the reason I do that over the windshield wiper is because I'm 46 years old. I've lost over 12 stone. That's over, what, 200 pounds? So the skin on my eyelids moves. Um, and by doing the circular movement rather than the swiping movement, you do tend to get fewer of those uh, like tiger stripey moments where your lid has folded over on itself. Now, I'm not really worried about fallout because I do my eyes first. If you do your eyes at a later stage, then either get those little sticky things to catch fallout or if you're the wrong side of 40 you can put powder down but if you're the right side of 40 like myself and many others uh, if you put powder under your eyes to catch fallout you are effectively uh, baking which will not be kind to those fine lines right I'm going to start off with a a bright green to start with. There's a fair amount of kick up in the pan with this but it doesn't bother me because at least you get pigment on the brush um, and you can just go back in and pick up the kick up on your way back. So I'm going to start off with this kind of midway in the eye and just coming down I don't start at the nose side because if you do end up plopping a little bit too much pigment down, I think I tapped off a little bit too much there, if you do end up putting too much pigment down, it's much easier to blend it out when your nose isn't actually in the way. And as always, hold the brush right at the end so you put as little pressure on your eye as possible. I'm just going to gently build this up until I get it to the kind of colour that I am requiring. Hmm, I like that. And I'm going to do the same thing this side. Obviously with this eye I can actually close my eye this is the eye that I'm blinding. If I close the other eye, it's definitely the blind leading the blind. Right, so, the lovely Anya, Pink Sweets. Those of you who are very, very new to my channel, I would imagine you'd know who she is, but just in case you are very new to YouTube, and obviously where she's not been uploading films, YouTube probably aren't sharing any of her stuff they're really helpful to smaller creators like that and um, she's amazing she really is she's like she will collab with any size of channel which is something that I've always done I mean you know when I first collab with um, Linda, I think she had seven subscribers and she was really shocked when I said to her would you like to subscribe? She's like, are you sure you have the right channel? And I'm like, yes. Um, and Anya is very much the same. If she likes the kind of looks and likes the personality of the person on that channel she will ask them if they want to collab, whether they've got four subscribers or four million subscribers. 
she is totally inclusive of everybody like myself you know there are no well, I'll collab with everybody except no there's none of that well actually she'll collab with anybody except our souls which is pretty much my rule as well the reason that I do both eyes kind of both colours at the same time rather than doing this side and then moving across to this side is one of the issues that I particularly face with fibro uh, but it's true of everybody really your, your, your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're James Charles and you photoshop them afterwards um, I'm just going to clean my brush on a clean washcloth to change colours uh, I don't like using colour switches they are way too harsh on the bristles of your brush um, your eyes are not symmetrical so and there's times when one of my lids will be more swollen than the other with my fibro so there's times that I have to do completely different shapes in order to get them to look the same when my eyes are open and if I've already applied all the colours and done all the blending I wouldn't necessarily notice that oh I need to go up an extra couple of mils this side or oh, I need to change the shaping of that right now what shade do I want to do as next? that's a very good question a very very good question uh, I've got about four palettes here that I'm kind of chuckling around with. I'm going to go with a slightly deeper green, but still a matte. This is one that when I depotted it, because I, I depotted a lot of palettes that I only really wanted like one or two shades out of it. So I depotted the shades I wanted and then just passed the rest of the palettes on. Um, And this is one of the ones that broke on me so I had to repress it so I'm hoping it still performs as well as it did. So far so good. I think I may have pressed it a little firm. It's a bit more difficult to get the pigment up onto the brush. Never mind. So I'm just going to build up this outer colour here and just blend it into that brighter green just so we get like a fade going across the eye there yeah I like that yeah so you know Anya is a much larger channel than I am and I was really really shocked when she said did I want to um, collab with her and we have done numerous collabs she I and Nona are the bitches of Eastwick together because we all experience the same bitch of a very large channel who treated all of us in a very shabby manner but people that they kick on the way up are the people that you meet on the way down so I'm happily awaiting the day that that person is travelling in the opposite direction. To be honest, I'm more upset that she upset Nona, because Nona's a sweetheart. So yeah, Anya, Nona and I are the bitches of Eastwick. Uh, Anya, Angelica. Lirma and myself uh, do a collab together with the AAA girls. So, 
And obviously I've been in quite a few, I say obviously, I've been in quite a few larger collabs with her like the, um, you know, the Paulina palette and we did a um, Fanona when, when one of her darling dogs, Mojo, passed on and over the Rainbow Bridge we did a film for her using a combination of the colour of the dog's fur and her favourite colour to create looks. There you can see that's actually got a really nice blend going on there. It's weird, this looks patchy in my viewfinder, but in real life it isn't. That's the problem with filming in Super HD. But I can assure you, this is actually blended. Right, let's clean this off. And then I think I might go in with uh, a browny greeny shade, which is obviously the trees, to deepen up through the crease here. So I'll get a slightly more tapered brush, I think, to do that. Grab this one instead. Mm. That's quite a nice grey, actually. Not the shade I'm looking for, though. Well, that could work. Maybe if I mix that with the grey, just to deepen it up a little bit. Mm, possibly. I do have a shimmer here I could use. Oh, do you know what? I might save that for the lid. Although I was going to do orange on the lid, wasn't I? Decisions, decisions folks, this is the problem. But then this is what I do, I just sit here and I play with colours. Um, it's quite a nice dark, I might use that one actually. Um, you're probably wondering, you're going to put a satin or a shimmer through the crease? Yeah. Yeah, yeah because with a satin or a shimmer, depending on the type of brush you use, depends very much how the pigment will appear. If you use a packing brush and or your finger and apply it to your lid, you're gonna get the full shimmer. If you apply it with a blending brush and just keep being very patient with the blending. You're going to get fallout because they're not designed to be blended. But eventually a lot of that shimmer pigment will blend away leaving you just with a base colour pigment underneath. And that's what I'm planning on doing here. I'm just going to tiny little circles initially and just run it through the crease. just to deepen it up. Now if you've moved your crease line this is the point that you now follow where you've moved it to. And I'm just going to very gently, very softly just keep blending Anya's got some really pretty dogs, one of which is called Jeffree Star, which I think is hysterical. Because obviously Jeffree Star loves dogs and she's got a dog called Jeffree Star. Uh, she does some amazing looks. You know, she, like me, she is not afraid of colour at all. Do you see what I mean about how this is just kind of blending the shimmer pigment away a little bit. 
just going to come down onto the outer edge of that mobile lid just to add a little bit of definition on the outer corner there. Anything darker goes backwards and anything light comes forwards. So if you have moved your crease by putting a deeper colour along where you've moved your crease to, when people are talking to you it will give the illusion that that part of your eye is further away and will help with the um, effect. Of, I mean you can see the difference here. Look how much deeper this part of the eye looks compared to over here. And that's the effect that putting a deeper colour on your created crease will have. As I said, I'm expecting fallout with this. I've got a little bit, not too much. Because I didn't pack that much onto the brush. But you do just need to be patient with it and just keep blending. I like that. It's weird where I've created so many um, dupe palettes just recently, or my versions of. Um, a lot of my greens are in different palettes now. So I'm trying to give love to the ones that I'm not using as often. Like I said, the majority of these I, I didn't write on the bottom of them what they are. So I'm really sorry, but I mean you can you can go through your own collection and find a green that's about the same shade. Because the whole point about the photo inspiration challenge is that you use palettes and pigments that you already have, you don't go out and buy something new. It's all about using what you have. Because I do think that's half of the problem with... And I've fallen into the trap myself. Um, I've got a load of palettes that I bought that I, that I still need to film with because I had that abscess and had to have some time off from filming. Um, but there's, there's this whole emphasis on buy a new palette, use it for a week oh there's another new palette out, buy that one, use it for a week and you end up with all these palettes that are beautiful, that you love that you're just not using so that's what I did with a lot of them when I was doing my declutter I pulled a lot of palettes out where I'm like I'm really only keeping this for that shade or this shade or those two shades. So I just took the shades out that I wanted and then decluttered those palettes off to friends or, you know, neighbour neighbours' kids who wanted to play with makeup and stuff. I'm like, do you know what? Here you go, just play with that. Um, and that is actually a good way of building up a single shadow collection as well. Right, I actually really like how this is going. I'm very happy with it so far. Now. Question is... Do I want to blend out that green at the top a bit more? I think I might. I'm just going to use a pad with some micellar water on. Just to neaten the edge up there. And clear any fallout because if I don't, when I'm editing, it'll annoy the ever-loving you-know-what out of me. I don't like using tape to create an edge because if it's sticky enough to stop your powder from going underneath the edge of it and then it's sticky enough to pull at your eyelid. 
which is not what we want. Uh, I think I've got a really nice kind of citrusy, yellowy, yellowy, greeny kind of. Yeah, I think I'm going to use that one. I'm going to get a super duper fluffy brush. And when I say super duper fluffy, I do mean super duper fluffy. Compare this to the brush that I started with. And I'm just going to pick up some of that yellow. Let's just tap back off because being a fluffy brush it has created quite a bit of kick up. And all I'm going to do is very gently just go along the edge of the greens at the top here. Just very softly buff them out a little bit. Helps tie the two greens together even more and just adds a little bit of lightness and softness to the top of the eye there. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, I've done quite a few kind of dupe palettes. I um, it started off because I I've, I've been saving to get the melt uh, Moete palette, and I'd literally just got enough to buy it. It was sold out everywhere, and that was the point that I found out. It was limited edition, um, which was really, really annoying. Um, so I duped it. Had to buy a couple of shadows in to get the exact shades that I wanted. But I duped it. Uh, I was inspired by Kaylee, my 24-hour clock buddy, to dupe it because she'd already duped it on her channel so I thought right I'm going to do it and then she and I did a collab and I um, on my Instagram you'll see that I've got I was disgusted with the Colourpop Wild Nothing palette I'm like have you ever seen a flowering cactus they are beautiful and you've produced this washed out thing which anybody deeper than NC25 is not going to be able to use. Um, so I kind of did my version of it. And then I did the same thing with Cocos Pocos palette. So I've got quite a few Oh, and I duped a, the Dose of Colours new five pan palette, the one kind of grungy, greeny, goldy one. I kind of duped that and then turned it into a 12 pan rather than a five pan. Right, okay, I really like that blending at the top there. Clean the brush off. Now comes the fun bit, deciding which particular shade of orange. I'm going to use on my lid. I think it's a lot of fun using shades where you don't actually use a specific palette because then people watching are not thinking, oh god, I've got to go and buy this palette, or oh god, I've got to go and buy that palette. No. You can just use whatever you've got to hand, my lovelies. Right, I'm going to use this really tiny lip brush, because it lets me get right into the corner here. Uh, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, but once I've loaded the pigment onto the brush, I will be wetting it with this. 
This is the Makeup Obsession Fix Fit Extra Hold Makeup Fixing Spray. Um, you can use any spray you want really. You can use um, a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. Um, you can use a setting spray, a priming spray, a finishing spray. You can even save an empty bottle and just fill it with fresh tap water each time you're going to do your, your makeup and just use, you know, water. The whole point of the liquid, we're not foiling the shadow, that's something completely different. What we're doing is wetting the shadow. It helps to minimise fallout and it, it gives the same kind of glow as if you'd applied it with your finger or with a silicon brush. So, I'm going to start off, I think, by going into a really bright yellow for the light inside the pumpkins and the lamp of the scarecrow. So, when I say bright yellow, I do mean a bright yellow. This is not gold, but this is yellow. I'm just going to wet that. Now, the ferrule, this bit here, is now wet or moist. So tuck it into your knuckles and just spin to dry it off. Because the last thing you want is moisture coming down here and loosening these bristles. Oh, by the way, if you're admiring the nails, these are stick-on ones that my lovely 4F family member, the lovely Shari, sent me. I felt much more like me with nails on. But I was having to wait for a split in my nail to grow out before I could apply any more false ones. Right, so I'm going to apply this just on the inner third-ish of my mobile lid. And just blending that out. I've not cut the crease because that's not the look that I'm going for today. I don't mind if the edges are a little bit blurred. Right, just dry the brush off. Reload with more pigment. Now, when I do my other eye, I have to break my own rule about not pulling your eyelid around because um, from where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic I've got super deep creasing here as you can see and if I don't actually stretch the lid out what happens is instead of this pigment being blended onto the lid it ends up stacking loosely into those creases and, um, and then ends up kind of cascading down my face through the day. So I've just marked how far out I need to go with it. And I'm literally only stretching the lid as far as it takes to straighten and level out that creasing. I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll. And I'm applying it quite quickly so that I hold it out for as little time as possible and then gently let it go again. I'm just going to pick up some, I've dried the brush and just going to pick up a bit more pigment. I always end up using more pigment on this side because um, simply because of the that, that creasing. And you can see this eye moves around an awful lot more than this one does. Right. Clean off the brush. Oh, I'm so glad that Anya's back. I've really missed her. But obviously, you know, you, your real life has to take precedence. That's just an email. 
I've got a really gorgeous orange shimmer I'm going to use. It's it's almost it's as orange as you can get before it becomes copper. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Just going to apply this to the kind of middle ish third of my mobile lid, bringing it out to blend in with the green on the outer corner, which we'll do by putting the brush right up on its tip just very lightly dragging the bristles backwards and forwards where the two shades meet and then in the middle here I'm going to lay it back down onto its side and lightly drag some of that yellow pigment into the orange just to blend the two together there can you see how pretty that's looking? Right, dry the brush off and reload to do the other eye. I suppose really I could have just pulled all the colours out that I was using and stuck them into an empty palette, but oh, that's more fun this way. Playing with loads of different palettes. Because normally I'll be reviewing a palette or doing a specific look with a, a palette that viewers have requested. So I don't normally end up using more than one palette at a time. So it's quite fun. And I think I'm going to do this with all the pick series now. Because if I can, I'll use my individual shadows. There, look at that. How pretty is that? It's almost like a sunburst on the lid. Really stunning. Right, my beauties. I am going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation and other base products on and uh, I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now for you, after the bubbly bit, it'll be absolutely instant. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly! Hey my babies, I am back. Okay, I did normal coloured brows today because I felt like doing normal colour brows today. I do occasionally. Um, <laughs> I know, I normally have wafty brows. Right, I'm going with this flat top brush and I'm going to go into the satin that I used here, this dark green. I'm just going to gently pat it once I've picked the pigment up. I'm just patting it once on my clean washcloth just to sort of minimise any fallout. I'm just going to run that along my lower lash line. And do the same thing this side. Yes, I just poked myself in the eye. Thank you, the viewers will know. This happens very often. And then I'm going to go in with uh, this brush. This is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, but I like it because it's flat top but chunky. 
So it's great for getting under your lashes and really smoking them out. Um, but you can use any sort of stubby, chubby kind of blender brush really. Um, and I'm going to go in, I've got a really nice lovely light teal that I want to use just to blend this out with. Just to keep the lower lash line a little bit brighter. But really blending it in with that green. Because the sky's got, at least on my phone anyway, some elements of a dark teal. And by blending it well with that green, it deepens up the lighter teal, but still gives me just a little bit of brightness under there. And I wanted to bring some teal in for the sky. That's pretty. Right, and got a really nice sort of bluey greeny shift to this eyeshadow. This is like a like a multi chrome. Uh, I'm going to pop a little bit of, this is just a really cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay probably over a decade ago now. And I'm going to pop a little bit of this just up under the tail of the brow. Because apparently, along with everything else, gravity hits our brows, folks. So by adding... A little bit of brightness under them just gives it that little bit of lift and then in a corner and I like to bring mine under the tear duct just blend it into the lower lash line do you know what I'm super tempted to try this eyeshadow as highlight. Super duper tempted in fact. Just look how bright that is. Ooh, I think it's got a little bit too much blue in it though. That's a pity. Because it is a Proper pretty shade. Right, my lovely ones, I am going to pause you one more time. So I'm just looking at all my different shiny shades now to see if I've got anything that would work, but I think I'm going to have to use a highlighter. All right, my darlings, I'm going to pause you. Oh, that might work, actually. And I'm going to decide what colour highlight I'm going to use on my face. Uh, put some on. Do some mascara, lippy, do something with the hair that I washed last night. Now I can't do a damn thing with it today. Story of my life. Um, and I will be back with my finished look once again for you my pickle absolutely bloody instant hey my lovely ones I am back um, I chucked some of that eyeshadow on but then I topped it with uh, some of this Laura Geller charming pink which is one of her baked gelato highlighters 
just to give it a bit more ta 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 uh, the mascara is the Catrice Glam and Doll Waterproof Mascara. It's a dupe for Bad Girl Bang, but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. Uh, in my waterline, I've got this LA Girl Shockwaves Neon Eyeliner in Fresh. Ah, exciting! I'm showing my age again. Uh, and the lippy is Wet n Wild Nudie Pertudie, which I really like because it's, although it's a nude, it's a very much cool toned, almost grey undertoned nude, which when you've got neutral to cool skin like myself, just, oh, love it, love, 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 love it. So, this is my finished look. I'll put the picture back up here again. What do you think? How did I do? What would you have done if that was if you were collabing with me today and that was the inspiration photo? What look would you have gone for? Which colours call to you from that picture? Were you drawn to the same as me? Or you know, would you have gone full on pumpkin? orange brown mm, kind of brown for the stem um, yellow for the light within would you have gone just green would you have gone just teal like the sky tell me I would really really love to know because the beauty of these pick challenges is it's very very rare. I think in all the ones I've done, and we're getting close to 50 now that I've done, I think there's only two, maybe three, that were even close to being similar. And even they were different enough that you could see they were different looks. And that's the beauty of it, because two, three, four, however many people are doing the collab, are inspired by the same set of colours and yet produce such different looks with it and that to me is interesting because all too often you'll watch these big beauty gurus they'll get a new palette out and they'll go oh mm -hmm, and this is the look that I'm going to do and most of them go for warm tone browns and oranges or browns and plums or browns and reds and I'd look at it and think, oh, that's not very well, but the colours that I want to see are... <laughs> Depending on what palette it was, obviously. And you almost feel like, oh, am I wrong then? Should I not be putting those colours together? But the whole point of makeup is it's a way for you to express yourself how you want to. You can do a makeup look if you don't like it. It washes off. You know, play with colours, play with textures, have fun. That's what makeup's meant to be, it's meant to be fun. Right. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you. At the moment, they seem to not be sending emails out, so double double check that your notifications still say all. Because I noticed that mine had all got knocked back to personalised. Um, so I literally had to go through every channel that I've got notifications set for and change them back to all. Yes, it was a very boring time, but I had an audiobook playing at the time, so at least I was a little bit distracted. Uh, once you've done that, a like, a comment, a cheeky little share maybe, get this video out there, would be very much appreciated. And once you've done all of that, I'm going to need you to go across to the amazing Anya and check out her film. 
Which colours was she drawn to? What look has she done? Which palette? Which colours has she used? Will it be similar to mine? Will it be different to mine? If it's different, how different is it? Has she been inspired by something completely different in that picture that I may not have spotted? The only way to find out is to go over and watch her film. When you're over there, do all those good youtuber -y things. Drop her a like, drop her a comment, let her know if you're from 4F and envelop her with the same loving hugs that you always give to me in my comments. And if you're not already subscribed to her, this would be an ideal time to do so. If you're here from Anya's channel, or you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it here, with my blethering on about all kinds of everything and nothing at the same time. You tend to get that with me. Well, my son, you always get that with me. It'd be lovely if you too would like to join the 4F family. It is super easy to do. All you've got to do is hit that red subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. Then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube will actually start sending emails again soon. Who knows? In the meantime, uh, if you're looking for a little bit of me time, yeah I know, it's cheesy, I was born in the 70s, cut me some slack. I've got an awful lot of films you can look through. I've got all the preceding pick challenges for a start. I've got other collabs, I've got product reviews, makeup tutorials, um, challenges, tag films. I even read you my favourite poem. So you're going to find something. So basically, as I have said, uh, for what seems like time in memorial, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, and indulge you a drink a snack and me putting colorful pigments on various parts of my face what more could you want to fill an afternoon or a couple of hours anyway right my lovely ones as ever all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous? And I will see you next time. Bye for now. I'm waving with this hand. I normally wave with this hand. That's better. I feel upside when I wave with the other hand. It's bizarre. Anyway, ta ta.